welcome to Wild About Nature. Beautiful day today, the morning, no one's about. It's a stunning morning, it's gonna rain later, so I'm making the most of it. So here's my new, before we do the lace wing ladybird habitat thing, this is my new bird feeder. I always have trouble with squirrels eating the, uh, the bird feed. You know what they're like if you've got a wildlife garden or bird feeders and squirrels, it's almost impossible to stop the meeting. So, after years of experimenting, well, this is the first thing I did. This is a plastic bowl with the lip sort taken off, cut off, so they haven't got any purchase or grip holds on there, and a pole underneath. And they, they always have trouble, they just slip off, getting up to the bird food. Now, I normally do this on the top of a short pole, but this time I've used a paint and decorating pole that extends you normally put a roller on the end of these and as you can see it's really high and attached to the deck here and what this allows you to do because it's the extender pole you can turn it the top section and then lower it down fill up your bird feeder and then extend it and then turn it the other way and it grips into position and the squirrels would have trouble getting up that little pole let alone round the plastic um, sort of defensive line at the top and onto the thing and there's no trees for them to jump across from so I think that is the ultimate squirrel proof bird feeder okay just take you down the bottom here show you what I've been working on there's slugs everywhere this morning so I'm careful not to tread on them so um, I like to create lacewing habitats for all I call them lacewing habitats, but they're not just for lacewings. They're for any insect or invertebrate that overwinters really. Need to be warm and dry. Sometimes in sheds you'll see ladybirds and a big cluster of them where they group together to stay warm over the winter. And I, I was thinking about something along these lines. I have wooden ladybird lacewing habitats, but I had some old guttering and I hate to uh, waste anything so I I thought of a, a, an idea for using this and cutting it into sections. Any guttering will do, it doesn't have to be the square, it could be a square, well I guess it ha this is the square, even though it's not technically square, or it can be a round. Anything so that when you stack it, you create a natural, the, the sides are together, but the, the top has a natural kind of gap, which is then the gap is the bit where the ladybirds are gonna go. This is gonna be housed in wood to give it really good insulation and the front will be mostly covered over because they won't they might go in there but they won't either survive or stay if it's cold because they'll just die of exposure so most of this will be covered over and I've done a similar thing up the top um, so cut them all what I did I started off at three inches and I every time I cut two I laid two pipes on top of each other so I only had to cut once and get two for every cut you could multiply that up again, but it becomes unwieldy if you do that. So measure three inches, cut two, and then every time you make the next cut, cut a quarter of an inch more, which is what I did. And eventually you'll end up with something like this. It's obviously on its side at the moment. I've put the, those two in position and obviously not glued or anything yet. But you can see this being the bottom here, when that stood up, it will give some natural protection from rain and it will be encased in wood they're not quite closed enough yet i've just laid them loosely there but you can see that they're going to make really nice little chambers for uh, invertebrates to clamber down into get cozy and spend the winter or at least that's the idea but you know what it's 100 percent recycled if it works brilliant if it doesn't then it's a prototype that failed but there's you're, something will inhabit it, but I'm really aiming for ladybirds and lace wings and stuff like that. But we'll see how it goes. So I'll, um, I'll catch up with you in a moment once I've glued it all and got it looking pretty. Okay, so it's all been stuck together and the top and bottom have been trimmed of all the corners, if you can imagine that, all the angled bits, so that it created a flat surface to stick the two bits of wood on either side. Now you can see at the front there, 
I say it's the front, it won't be the front once it's all finished. There's a gap underneath, kind of both ends where, and the, and the gap exists all, where, all the way along, and that's where hopefully the insects will go in and then up into the chambers, depending on the orientation, and sit there until the spring. Um, the reason why it's in a, a makeshift bath of uh, exterior wood finish is because I had an old can where the rain had been filling it up. I didn't know uh, the lid had been leaking. So rather than throw it away, it's like a third of the consistency that it was. I created a little bath and hopefully I can treat this wood and not waste any of the paint, which otherwise would have been thrown away. All in the spirit of recycling, because this is all 100% recycled. Um, Juicens, which is a company near me, have kindly been allowing me to, I guess I'll call it dumpster dive because it, that would be the most appropriate term for any Americans watching. They've got a big sort of uh, container that they throw their odds and ends in for wood and like you can see I've got loads down there and I, I go down hopefully regularly and I'll be able to take anything I want. So while that soaks in and absorbs all that paint, I'll do the other side as well give it a couple of coats. It's all been glued, there's actually no nails in any of this. So once it's all done, I'll uh, set it up and I'll do a final shot. Okay, so it's all finished. Just take you to have a look. Came out really well, I think, then I am biased. I think it looks really nice, really. I was worried about it halfway through because I thought, oh, it's not working. It was so hard to stick the slats together because they naturally wanted to spring out of position and um, so that was fun you can see oh it's hard but you can imagine underneath they can walk up inside there and then the slats are above them and hopefully because it's completely sealed there's it's glued all the way around top and bottom and even the sides in each slit is glued with wood glue external weatherproof wood glue so hopefully it will create really warm chambers up in there and the plastic sort of at any point five six seven layers thick because they're overlapping all the way up so it would be quite warm in there and with the wood top and bottom and back as well i think it's i've got a fair enough chance as I can to get ladybirds or lacewings or whatever else would overwinter. I did research the bugs, how you know those two bugs particularly, but also I know from experience that they like warm, dry places to overwinter. So I've kind of replicated that, put myself in a bug's mind, and I live in there. So it's kind of how I do a lot of my stuff. I haven't seen one of these online. Perhaps I'll start a trend. But I think it's, it looks really good. And it's a bit unique. And for me, it's the act of building it too. I like to imagine something and then realise it by building it. And that's half the fun for me. So that little area now is looking quite nice. I'm not sure if I'll keep the, um, the ladybird lacewing habitat there. It might be a bit exposed there, a bit too exposed. I think it needs to go in a, a really sort of calm corner of the garden, perhaps with sunlight to keep it warm. So all done. Please like and subscribe. If any questions below, I'm happy to answer them. Please follow on Twitter and remember everything that gets raised on this channel goes to charity and to building habitats. Hopefully I've inspired a few of you to make stuff. I know I've got some wonderful messages from people in America who've said they've transformed their gardens because of my video, because of my videos. And that's why I do it. It's not about the number of people that subscribe to your channel. It's about the quality of those people. And I'm really proud to have the people following that I do. So fair play without you. I don't know if I'd do it, to be honest. I'd carry on doing the gardening. And making the habitats I'm obsessed but I don't think I'd do the whole YouTube thing without the positive feedback so thank you very much for that have a lovely evening where you are and we'll speak soon